Uh, in the oil market, traders are continuing to keep an eye on the Middle East. Amid reports, Iran has ordered a retaliatory strike on Israel for killing a Hamas leader on Iranian soil. It comes on the heels of an Israeli airstrike that also killed a Hezbollah commander Tuesday night. Geopolitical tensions are one of the reasons why oil had a big rally yesterday. Uh, we do know, though, in the past month, there's been a general malaise around crude. Some of that is worries about demand out of China. Some had wondered, uh, given that, if OPEC Plus members might change course on a plan to revive halted oil production next quarter. But at a meeting, the takeaways seem to be that that is not the current case. Let's talk about all these dynamics now with Clay Siegel. He is Global Oil Service Director at Rapidan Energy. Clay, it's always great to see you. Let's just start with how the oil market has been reacting to the latest out of the Middle East. What's been your interpretation? Hey, good morning, John. Good to be with you. Well, uh, we have seen quite the deterioration uh, over the last uh, three to four days. If there's one silver lining when it comes to the outlook for stability, it's that actually the leaderships in Israel and Iran and Hezbollah do have one thing in common. None of them really want a costly major regional war. The problem, though, is that with each one of these strikes and counter strikes, uh, it becomes harder to de-escalate, right? The tension is just ratcheting higher and higher. Right now, the ball is in Iran's court after this latest assassination of the Hamas leader, uh, Ismail Haniya, to come up with a move, a retaliation against Israel that fits the bill of being tough enough, but also we believe they don't want to escalate the situation further. So at Rapidan, we're thinking that the most likely outcome is a sizable retaliation, but one that does not provoke further fear and anxiety in the market. How do you think, um, that's helpful analysis, how do you think the oil market will um, position itself depending on where we go from here. Bloomberg had some reporting suggesting that um, uh, there were a lot of traders that were um, acquiring call options, so the option to potentially buy crude, depending on where things play out in the Middle East. You know, uh, long positioning can come in and out of the market almost based on changing headlines hour to hour these days. Uh, we're, we're expecting Iran's retaliation to not provoke a major fear of an oil supply disruption in the Middle East. That's definitely our base case. Uh, there's an outlier case that says if the retaliation that we see does result in even higher tensions requiring or compelling Israel to hit back even harder and potentially even to move into Lebanon, then that would garner more concern by oil traders that there could be eventually in the future the prospect of a supply disruption. We don't see it anytime soon. And traders would be justified in kind of fading the geopolitical risk to an extent because they were head faked in 2022 when most analysts thought that Russian oil supply was going to go off the market after the invasion of Ukraine. That didn't happen. It just got redirected. And we've talked about that before. And then even in the last 10 months, since you've had kind of a hot war in the Middle East, no major disruption to oil supplies. But we are starting to enter more of uncharted territory. Uh, this really started started back in April when you had the first direct strikes between uh, Iran and Israel. It looks like that that path is poised to continue with the next round we're expecting. So some geopolitical risk should return to the oil price. I want to be very clear, though, that at Rapidan, looking just at pure supply demand fundamentals, away from geopolitical risk, we're expecting higher oil prices in the third quarter just because the fundamental balance between demand and supply is tightening. So let's build on that, because the other thing I referenced is um, there was already this plan in place to see OPEC Plus members, uh, some of whom are obviously in the Middle East and watching the conflict very closely, that they were ready to revive output next quarter. Uh, and Bloomberg's latest reporting would suggest that uh, that plan is still in place for now. So you know, if you're anticipating that a tight market helps the price of oil. Do you think some of those OPEC Plus members are anticipating the same thing? 
Well, we are expecting the announced and published program for tapering of OPEC plus supply cuts to be implemented on schedule later this year, starting in the fourth quarter, and to continue on schedule for the following 12 months, as long as supply demand conditions warrant and justify continuing on that path. And I believe that the announcement that came out of the meeting today referenced that scenario mm. and said that they're on track to do what they uh, published in June as long as supply demand conditions hold up. What we have to keep our eye on, the big X factor, is China. And in China, it's kind of a mixed bag. The stimulus that we were expecting to uh, really drive construction demand for diesel fuel has not materialized in the first half of the year. Other parts of the barrel, like uh, gasoline and jet fuel, look more constructive. So China's still on track for oil demand growth, uh, also from the petrochemical sector, but diesel looks especially weak. Yeah, the, the China part is, is um, uh, as, as I said, it has felt like just in the day-to-day -day movements of the market uh, through July, that seemed to be where there was growing unease. Um, so I guess if we're looking at pricing right now, um, you, you, it sounds like you anticipate moving into the third quarter that you could see some oil price appreciation. We obviously have a lot of investors who uh, buy into the energy stocks. They're very curious about the out, outlook for oil. If I were to ask you to sort of share some thoughts on where WTI uh, goes from here, we're currently at around 77, so we've lost some ground uh, over the last month. Give us a sense on, on what you think the price action could look like going forward. Sure. So for the third quarter, we're expecting WTI to be in the mid 80s, about $84 per barrel average. So it carries approximately a $4 discount versus uh, Brent, the global benchmark. And that's based primarily on world conditions, but also on regional conditions. And so we are expecting some growth in Canadian oil production, approximately 200,000 barrels per day this year versus last year. And we have not seen major disruptions from wildfires, so that's still on track. Uh, we have seen some degree of de-bottlenecking from new midstream projects that have come on stream that can move that Canadian oil to market. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, we've had some weakness in demand for Canadian crude and others because of refinery outages in the uh, central part of the United States. But once those clear up, the outlook for WTI is to be higher than it has been in the last few weeks.